thrilling win, particularly uh, in the first half. They fought back. Bellarmine cut it down to six at the half after being uh, behind close to double figures early. Maybe got behind as far as nine in the first half, fought back a little bit. And then when you shoot 63% in the second half, uh, you've got a shot and uh, hit their free throws. Coach, <laughs> it's, you're shaking your head. Uh, pretty amazing uh, basketball, what That's we saw here. That's the I've had in any statistics this game. Kirk goes down after a minute 22. I was looking right at it, and, and Brad's on top of it, and we're going to treat that the whole way home. The last thing we put on the board today was this is going to take everybody. And it, it's amazing how much everyone contributed defensively the second half. The, the key to the game in the second half is they shot 40%. Same as they shot in the first half, but the second half they go three for 12 from the three. Or they had 12 threes against us in Louisville. Today they had uh, eight threes. And, you know, we, we shot great in Louisville. We shot great today. We had 17 assists. We had 19 in Louisville. But you just pick all the parts, and we don't win the game without one guy playing great. We don't. The first half we had a hard time. We couldn't finish at the rim. Mm -mm. I mean, we just couldn't finish at the rim at the end of the game, you know, points in the paint. And, and let's talk about LT. Uh, Langdon Haddon. We have seen this evolve from high school to William and Mary to us day by day, week by week. You know, he was 8 for 8 the last two games. Tonight he goes 6 for 9. So he's 14, 14 for 17, uh, four rebounds each last two games, 8 tonight. And he got and some three big, block shots. Three block shots. The big block guy. He got some. He got some big boy. Re, big boy rebounds tonight. Uh, we end up out rebounding them 36-32. That's the key to the game. Our goal was to hold them under 10 offensive rebounds. They got 10. They got 11. Our goal was 10. Um, you know. And you got to give them credit. There was no quit. There was no quit. Tough game. Tough game to officiate. Tough game to coach. Tough game to play. Uh, Tough game to be a radio analyst. Mark was really upset uh, during portions well, of the. Yeah, I'll say it. It's the worst officiated game I've seen in 15 years. Sitting here, well, not even close. Go ahead. You Go don't ahead. want to talk about something else. Take something out of coach's wallet. There. Uh, you know, <laughs> unbelievable bad. But uh, you you were confident you were going to get good shots. Uh, what made you feel that that way? From well, the second half we wanted to be we weren't going to be like set play heavy. We wanted to rebound and make it a five-on-four game and never let the floor settle in the second half, and it didn't. I mean, it never settled in the second half. We wanted them in a position to chase the ball, and we wanted to get it inside out or finish inside, and we did. Yeah, one time LT gets a dunk down here and gets i mean, gets a block down here and a layup at the other end. Yes, yes. Well, a dunk at the other end. Okay. You say, how's that happen, Coach? Well, it, it's easy to stop at the top and say you're going to reverse the ball. We wanted him – to sprint to, we've been teaching, sprint to the arc. Stick your stick your head in the basket. Literally run and put your head in the basket. And and you see what these kind of things happen for. Him. And Ben kept you in it early yeah, with that, the threes. Was, and then that was <laughs> pretty spectacular. 29 points. And fouled out with 418 to go. He only played 24 minutes. He had 29 points off 16 shots. And four rebounds. Yep. I tell you, again, though, you know, let's, let's keep in mind now, he's a redshirt freshman. Right. So he's, you know, and, and we put a little Landon Hacker in there. I mean, he does what he's supposed to. Yeah, he does what we tell him. Garrett, Garrett Tipton, in terms of big mm. shot offense, took the game over. Yeah, he did. And he gets fouled, and it's just he goes to the line. I mean, with unbelievable confidence. Uh, you know, we go 15 out of 17 on the game. Um, like JB was upset. JB and Alec in the first half were both 0 for 6. Yeah. And, 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 um, uh, Pete had played 11 minutes. Garrett had played 13 minutes. And we said, we're going to be okay. We're going to be all right. Let's just keep believing in each other. With the one theory, like I just said, the last thing I put on the board, I put it in green. It takes. It's going to take everybody. And it did. It did. It took everybody. Yeah, not wasn't one of your better halves, and you're only down six at halftime, and no, everything no was question. looking pretty good. Well, I mean, we shot 43. We just didn't. You know, if you look at statistically the first half, uh, you, you you would think we played good, but we did, but we did. 
Well, I mean, you went into the game not letting Dai and McGee shoot threes, and you did. Start the game, you let them shoot threes. I mean, just didn't do some things right the first half, and you're only down six. So. Well, they only got nine threes off. Or, excuse me, they only took 12 threes second half. Yeah, three only hit three of them. Yeah. They are so hard to contend off the bounce. I mean, That's that how was, they play. Yeah, they That's just they drive it right to the basket. And uh, Anybody that didn't see the picture I put on Twitter this morning will tell you about this program. So we had breakfast, 9 o'clock. We had film. We immediately went to a walkthrough adjacent to the room where we had film in their parking lot. We walk out. Our coaches and managers had taped off a free throw lane <laughs> and, and a three-point line in the parking lot on asphalt. It's on Twitter at Bellarmine Hoops. And we – that's – that's when I say it takes everybody, and, and Mr. Dave, our bus driver is the most excited guy in this place. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Uh, maybe you should do that from now on. Just have your walk through well, outside. Yeah. Just, you know, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this. Here's our, the last thing we said in the locker room. It was a special locker room. Uh, Coach Bill Olson, son David, his two sons, Moselle Peterson, his son that played for us at Ballard. They were, it, it, that's the smallest locker room in my life as a coach. <laughs> and they were all in there, though. And the last thing we talked about in the locker room was starting – Monday, every ounce of everybody's effort, mentally, physically, on the court, off the court. If fans want to help and you want to make treats or you want to do things, these these seniors, this is going to be senior week for them. Yes, J.B. already has a good degree. He's going to walk. Garrett is going to walk with a, you know, he's getting an MBA, still has an option. Nick Thielen, you know, out career and in injury. Drew Comer, um, Sam Duvall, Sheldon Christmas. This is about them this whole week. I'm not just doing it one day. Bash. We're going to do it the whole week, right. huh? Bash. No, Bash will be back. He's okay. only he's only a junior. Period. No. Yeah, Sheldon. By the way, for folks who don't know, Sheldon Christmas. Ma- manager uh, does a great job. Part of the BMA. BMA Bellman <laughs> Manager Association. Yep. And and this whole week is going to be Tristan Beckman. I'm sorry, yep. Tristan T Bone T Bone. So, I'm sorry, loves, Tristan. Everybody, everybody loves him. So it's going to be an incredible week for these guys. Uh, and you know we need string some together. We are in the Yum Center on Thursday night, seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty in the Yum Center, and four o'clock Sunday in Freedom Hall. Against Central Arkansas, you are undefeated. North at Alabama, the, you yeah. are undefeated at the Home Center this, this year. This year, so, this year, that's so, true. so hopefully that um, can keep going. But they're North Alabama's playing pretty good ball here lately. Uh, they are playing tonight. Were There's, we the earliest game? Yeah, of the day? that. Yeah, I was going to say yeah, you don't have much one. to. Uh, North Florida's beaten Stetson by double digits. Sixty-eight fifty-five. That are in that game is in Jacksonville. I, I, I will share this with our fans that are so dedicated. And listen, uh, we practiced yesterday morning at. 9.30, 9.45 at Liberty in their arena uh, because the early practice time here, we want to, early game time, we want to practice. And we stand waiting for our bus. And Richie McKay comes out he, he to help us kind of get our bus in. If you have respect for Richie McKay, if you had heard what he said about this basketball program, not just the players, not just the coaches, not just the style play, the program, and he didn't have to. They're leaving the league. He had no reason to say all that. And he closed it down. He said, you know, Coach, I respect you so much. And he said, but I just want to tell you one thing, and I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. So I'm really dialed in listening to him. I said, yes, sir, Coach. He goes, don't you ever, ever call me. I wouldn't pay play you for a million dollars ever again. <laughs> and I just hit him and walked away and started laughing. Even though he's won. For, they've won four. <laughs> well, they have a, a tremendous program. Yeah. He, he, he's you know, his background is Tony Bennett in Virginia. Sure. That's a great compliment. Uh, and, and if our players had been already showered up on the bus, I would have had him. I don't care. We could play him again in the conference tournament. Yeah, that's I would have right. had him tell those players. It was incredible. It's going to be a good ride home. Yes, We're looking forward to this one. All a right. lot of college basketball on. Yep. So here we go. All right. Coach, thank you.